and welcome to Meet the Author. I'm your host, Emily Godfrey. You might be wondering what these unusual objects are doing here. We have some old luggage, baseball equipment, and a couple of delicious looking cakes. Well, you're about to find out. Here to explain what this cool stuff has to do with today's show is our guest author, Lisa Graff. The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Lisa, welcome to our program about the writing process. Hi. Some of Lisa's book titles include Absolutely Almost, A Tangle of Knots, and her latest release, Lost in the Sun. So Lisa, what do these objects represent? Let's start with the baseball stuff. We've got some mitts, some baseball bats. How do these objects relate to Lost in the Sun? Yeah, so in Lost in the Sun, the main character is Trent. He's 12 years old, and baseball is his favorite sport. He's obsessed with baseball. He loves watching it. He loves playing it. And um, over the course of the book, you find out that he wants to join his baseball team, but something's holding him back. Ooh, that sounds really good. <laughs> well, we have a bunch of questions about Lost in the Sun email questions from the Lake and 5th and 6th grade Newberry Club. So let's go to some of those emails right now. How did you get the idea for the opening of the book? Did that accident really happen? So the accident that is at the center of Lost in the Sun is actually something that I pulled from a book that I wrote many years ago called Umbrella Summer. Uh, the two books are related, but they're not, Lost in the Sun is not a sequel. You don't have to read one before you read the other. Uh, so I spent a really long time figuring out what would be the accident that would fit perfectly to the characters and the themes of Umbrella Summer. And so in some ways it was really easy to just jump off of that and start a new book with new characters. Oh, wow. Well, we have another question from the Lake Ann Book Club. Um, do you have a book of thoughts? Ooh, I don't. Trent has a book of thoughts in Lost in the Sun, and he, well, he draws. He doesn't write down things that he's thinking, but he draws a lot of the things that are running around in his mind. When I was a kid, I kept a lot of journals and diaries, but I don't really anymore. How does that help Trent throughout the book? I think for him it's a way of just uh, expressing what he's feeling. He's very angry. He has a lot of things that he's dealing with that he feels really guilty about. And for him, it's a way to get them down on paper so they don't, you know, overtake his thoughts. Yeah. And are you a baseball fan? Is that why you wrote this book with baseball characters? I'm not. I'm not really into sports. I know a little bit about baseball. My husband is a huge baseball fan, so I made sure that he checked all of the parts that are in the book about baseball, and he would tell me what made sense and what didn't make sense, and he'd help me come up with things that Trent would talk about. And where did the title come from? Is that like a baseball term? Or? It is a baseball term. This book was really hard to come up with a title for. Some of my books, the titles just leap into my head, and um, this one took a really, really long time, and I knew I wanted it to have a title that had to do with baseball, but I couldn't think of anything, and finally, after months and months and months, my husband turned to me and he said, you know what would be a great title, Lost in the Sun, and I said, that is a great title, I wish you'd thought of that months ago. <laughs> yeah, is that how you, did you add that scene where the mom was like, I did, yeah, yeah I added the scene specifically because we came up with mm -hmm. this title that seems so great and so perfect to the book yeah oh, that's awesome that's very cool well my guest today is author Lisa Graff and you can join our conversation by calling the number on the screen we welcome your questions okay so on to the next set of objects we have this old luggage and some very delicious looking cakes how do these objects um, relate to the book A Tangle of Knots well, in A Tangle of Knots, Katie, who's the main character, she lives with several of the other characters in the book in a lost luggage emporium, which is sort of a store that sells luggage that other people have lost, typically on airplanes or buses. And um, so that's where the luggage comes in. And the cakes are because Katie has a special magical talent for cake baking. 
Well, Lisa, students relate to stories in many ways. As a class activity, some students from Stewart High School read A Tangle of Knots, and they have some questions for you. Here's what they want to know. My question for Ms. Graf is, how did she come up with this book? Did it come to her in a dream, or how was the creative process of writing this? Why did you become a writer? Why did you decide to give Katie the talent of baking? What is your talent? <laughs> so those are some great questions. Well, how did you come up with the story for A Tangle of Knots? Uh, it came from a lot of places, but the original idea was because I was actually watching a television show um, about weird businesses that exist in the world, and one of them was this business, the Unclaimed Baggage Center in Scottsboro, Al Alabama. It's a real place. I've never been. I would love to go, but it's a lot like the Lost Luggage Emporium in my book, so they buy and sell lost luggage. Do you know if they open it up and look inside? And they do. They sell everything that's in the suitcase. So if you lose your suitcase on an airplane and the, the airline can't get it back to you, they do have to try for a period of time to get it back to you. But if they can't, they sell it to the store, and the store can sell everything that's inside to whoever wants to buy it. That would be like a great inspiration for a story. <laughs> yeah, that's Whatever what I you thought. Whatever you open up, that's <laughs> fantastic. So have you always wanted to be a writer? I didn't. I When I was a kid, I loved writing, but I it never really occurred to me that that was was an actual job. I think that sounds really silly, but when I was a kid, it just seemed like books appeared from nowhere. Um, so when I was a kid, I was really into math and, and science, and so I thought I would probably grow up to be a doctor or do something with science. Uh, and then I discovered that I really love to write, and so now I get to incorporate things like science into my books, which is really fun. And you were a book editor, right? Has that helped with like the writing process? Yes, I was an editor for about five years, uh, and so I got to work on other people's stories. And in some ways, it did help a lot. One of the ways that it helped was that I got to see the whole process of writing a book, and I got to see that even really, really phenomenal writers, when they start out, their books aren't always really strong, and you have to go through a process of revising, and that's how every book works. And that made me feel a little better when I would start out writing rough drafts, and it wouldn't be exactly the story that I was trying to tell. Yeah, well, um, so for A Tangle of Knots, Katie has a special talent of baking. Was that always her talent, or did you like edit that in or revise it? Did you ever have to change that? It took me a while to figure out what her talent was. I knew some of the other characters before I knew hers, and finally I decided to go with something that I really love doing, so I love baking, and that seemed like a good fit for her. I was just going to ask you if you love to bake. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything like a favorite thing that you like to bake? I probably love pies the most more than cakes, and I love cookies. I'll really eat anything that's baked, though. <laughs> well, do you have any special talent, like, like in the book? I think I get asked this a lot because of the book, and I feel like my special talent is probably suitcase packing. Uh, I have this ability to just sort of, you can lay anything out on a bed, and it can look like it would never, ever fit in your suitcase, and I can get it in there. That's my special skill. Oh. Yeah. Well, what's the idea uh, behind the characters finding their special skill? I really wanted to explore the idea that I think kids in real life go through a period, and adults do too, where they want to know what it is that makes them special or if there is anything that makes them special. And this seemed like a really fun, magical way to explore that. And I also liked the idea that you kind of weren't in charge of what your talent was, that something could just plop in your lap that you maybe even didn't really like to do that much, but you were the best in the world at. How would you deal with that? I just thought it would be a fun thing to, to look at. Yeah. Well, a mix of family, a dash of talent, peppered by fate, and a pinch of magic are the ingredients in Lisa's Graf's novel, A Tangle of Knots. For students in Shannon Hoff's class, this book provided the perfect recipe for a class lesson. Let's take a look. As you open the pages of Lisa Graf's A Tangle of Knots, you'll find cake recipes sprinkled throughout the book. But this is not a cookbook. The recipes serve up delightful descriptions of various characters found in the story. For example, Miss Mallory's Peach Cake, a cake that's sweet, simple, and hard to dislike, accurately describes Jennifer Mallory, who runs an orphanage for young girls. And Will's S'mores Cake, a cake that always disappears, is aptly named for Will Asher, a pint-sized disappearing act of a boy. These recipes come from Katie, a diminutive orphan with a delicious talent for baking. 
So we read the book, A Tangle of Knots by Lisa Graff, correct? Yeah. Right, and so do you remember in the book there were recipes? Yes. And so we made some of the recipes today and baked a couple of the cakes because what's Katie's special talent? Baking a cake. Baking a cake. So we have two types of cakes here. We made a peach cake, which is at the far side, and near me we have the s'mores. So I'm gonna first demonstrate how we're gonna make the s'more cake and then we'll all make s'mores and we'll frost the peach cake. All right, so let's start. Since we noticed Katie's talent was a baking of the recipes, we decided to take the baking part of the book and bring it into a lesson to practice a basic life skills such as following instructions and recipes. So we practice measuring and following basic yeah. one step instructions. I would like you to crumble this on top of it. Crumble it. What does crumble mean? Break it up into little pieces. There you go. Break it up. Break it into little tiny pieces. Smush it. Like that. Smush it. Go. Yes. Yes. Our students noticed how Katie's special talent was of baking. So we wanted to discuss what each student's favorite talent was. And we talked about how a talent is something that they were good at. So our students shared and thought about what they thought was special about themselves and what their talent was. My talent is soccer. My favorite talent is math. I like playing basketball because I like to make up points. Our activity of frosting the cakes and making our steps by listening to instructions really links back to the book that we read of Katie's talent of baking and the recipes that were in Lisa Graff's book. Yum! <laughs> From the library at Stewart High School, where good reads are always a sweet sensation, <laughs> this is Margaret Kivlin for Meet the Author. And now, back to the studio. Okay, pun intended. What a sweet activity. <laughs> As an educator, I always love to see lessons come alive and the students get to explore their own talents. What did you think? I loved it. I thought it was great. I really love when I get to go into classrooms or schools and see how they've integrated the books into their lesson plans. I think it's really interesting. Well, I think it's really interesting how you incorporated all of those neat recipes in the book, but then also each recipe described a different character. How did you come up with the recipes? It took a lot of time. Um, I used different recipes as bases, either from cookbooks or blogs that I found, and I would tweak every one to see what fit best for the character that I was trying to write to. And so I tried out dozens and dozens and dozens of recipes over probably about six months, and I would invite friends over to help me eat all these delicious cakes. Um, it was a lot of fun, but a lot of baking. <laughs> well. Um, Okay, can you tell me about Zane's garlic cake? Like, did you did you eat that cake? That one's really good. People always ask me if that's good. It's one of my favorites. That one is sort of like a cornbread. It's not super sweet. Actually, it's it's really barely sweet. But um, it's a savory cake, and I think it would be really good as like a crust to a pizza or something. It's really it's a really fun good cake. Well, we have a few cakes here. We actually have Miss Mallory's peach cake right here, which looks really delicious. Oh, I'm sorry, we have Miss Mallory's peach cake next to you, and we have Katie's chocolate almond cherry cake they right here. Really good. We'll have to eat these later. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, if you are just tuning in, you are watching Meet the Author. Give us a call. In a moment, we will return to the classroom and learn what students want to know from the author, Lisa Graff. Let's take a look. How did you come to the conclusion that Katie would find Toby as her father? And did that relate to you in any way? What is Katie going to do now that she has no talent of baking? I'm sure it took, it took a lot of time to write the book. What is your favorite part of the book? Really good question. So let's start with the last one. What was your favorite part of writing the book? My favorite part of writing the book was figuring out how the puzzly pieces were going to come together. I love books that are puzzles. One of my favorite books is The Westing Game and Holes, and those were sort of my inspiration for this book. I knew that I'd have a lot of separate characters and separate storylines, and it was really difficult but really fun to figure out how they all connected. 
Well, speaking of puzzles, this story is very much like a puzzle when they all fit together. How did you come up with the ending? Like, did you start with the ending first and then write backwards? Did you know where you were going? I knew a little bit. For this book, I outlined a lot. I actually really tend not to like to outline, but I knew that for this book in particular, I needed to know where I was going. So I did a lot of brainstorming. I spent a couple months just writing down all my ideas and then trying to figure out how they might go together. And then I did a really, really, really long long outline um, and so I did know before I started to write actual words on the page what was going to happen but when I started outlining I just wasn't quite sure where it was going to all end up. Well tell me more about your writing process. I understand that you brought a, a, a galley copy I of did. a new book you have coming out. I did. So I have this new book. This is called A Clatter of Jars, and this is an advanced reader copy. So this book comes out this May, and this is a companion book to A Tangle of Knots. It takes place in the same world, and all the characters have talents, but uh, it doesn't have many of the same characters. There are a few who overlap. So you can read this book without reading A Tangle of Knots, but if you like A Tangle of Knots, you'll probably like this one too. And um, speaking of my writing process, I brought some pages. Uh, this is just an example of the process that that I go through, I, I like showing people because the way that I write uh, is that I like to write rough drafts uh, very, very quickly. And then I edit them a lot. I edit over and over and over and over. So these are some of my pages where I've, I've done this to myself. This is not an editor. I really oh, wow. read through every single word and look through every word and try to figure out what needs to be there and, and what should go. And I'm really brutal. <laughs> I think I should keep only the words that are absolutely necessary. Well, we have a call from Brendan. Um, caller, are you there? Yes. Hi. What's your question for Lisa Graff? How did you come up with the idea with Lost in the Sun? The idea for Lost in the Sun, you know, I was actually working on a different book at the time that I uh, started writing this book, and it popped into my head that it would be wonderful to write from the point of view of Trent. Like I said, I wrote a book several years ago, Umbrella Summer, that had at the heart of it the same accident, but I never wrote about the boy who hit the hockey puck that killed Jared in that book. And so I realized that that was also its own story and that I needed to write about this boy and what had happened to him and how he felt about the accident. So really the story found me in a way and I didn't really look for it. Well, can you tell us more about your revising and editing process? Like where do you come up with all your ideas for characters? I think what I like to do is I'm someone who writes very quickly, like I said, and I write down really every idea that I have. And at the beginning, I don't worry about if it's a good idea or if it makes sense with the rest of the story and if it fits. And I write drafts that are so long, they're probably three times as long as the book will end up being. And then I read through the draft and I realize what parts are really good and what parts really stink. And then I take out the parts that stink and I try to make the other parts better. So for me, it's a lot of brainstorming and just throwing things at the page and seeing what sticks. Well, give us an example from A Tangle of Knots. I had in, so in A Tangle of Knots, in the finished book, there are nine main characters, but in my first draft, there were 11 main characters. Oh, wow. So uh, two characters obviously got cut. <laughs> there was another Asher child who didn't end up in the final version, and his name was Asher Arnold Asher the third, and he <laughs> had a talent for playing baseball. You can see that I like using mm -hmm. baseball a lot. Um, and I ended up cutting him because I realized that he didn't need to be in the story, that there were other characters whose storylines were so similar to his that it didn't make sense for him to be there too. And I had another character named Juan who I loved, but I ended up cutting for similar reasons. And I actually did use him in my new book, A Clatter of Jars, so he got to make an appearance. <laughs> Do you do that often? Do you often like use your characters and kind of intermingle them in new books? And I've only done them for these two pairs of books so far, but it is fun because it feels like you already have a world that you've invented, and so you can pull things from there. Do you get attached to your characters emotionally? You're like, I'm not done with them. I want to see I more. I do. I know. You know, I kind of get to know who they are and what they might do in a in a situation, and so it was fun to write. For example, to write about Umbrella Summer, and I had this character Annie who I really love. She's at the center of that book. She's the sister of the boy who died. And so I knew all about her, but then to see her from Trent's point of view was really interesting because Trent doesn't really like her, and I had come to love her. So it was really interesting to write, you know, this alternate perspective of her. Wow. 
So um, we have a couple more questions from the Lake and Newberry Book Club. Um, so let's go to them. They write, the story in Lost in the Sun ended with so many unanswered questions. Um, Whatever happened to Fallon? Will we ever know how she got the scar? I do get that question a lot, I have to say. Um, I really wanted it to be a mystery and to remain a mystery exactly what happened to Fallon. I thought that was really important to the story that I didn't spell everything out. I like stories where not everything is spelled out. I know some people don't, but uh, for me it's really important that it's a mystery. And I also like the idea that when you read a book, anything that's not written on the page is yours to invent. So mm -hmm. I always like to tell kids that they can make up whatever they wanted outside of the story. And I think that's a really wonderful part about reading that the book becomes yours too and the story becomes yours. Did you have a fun time coming up with the stories that Fallon told about her scar? <laughs> yeah. With all the different ideas? I had a whole list actually and there were ones I don't remember what they were but they, I had really bonkers ones that didn't make it into the story. I just wrote pages and pages of weird ones. <laughs> well we have another um, email from the Lake Ann Book Club. And this one says, what made you decide to have Annie want to be friends with Trent's brother, Doug? Oh, uh, well, uh, in Umbrella Summer, she actually hates Doug. And so part of the story of that book was how she becomes friends with him. And so in this book, they, they are friends already. But I liked them. I think they're a funny pair because he is so goofy. And um, she's a little bit more serious than he is. And I liked their energy together. And our final email question from, from the Lake Ann Book Club is, are any of the actual events in the story based on facts? You know, I'm trying to think. I think there's always a couple things in all of my stories that are based in fact, but I can't think of any major ones that are, usually I like to invent the big things, but then I pull in things that have happened to me and I pull in the emotions of things that have happened in my real life, but usually the big events aren't there. So a lot of, I would say that a lot of the characters in the book are probably pulled from people that I know in real life, but um, maybe not intentionally all the time. Well, I have a kind of a, a question about something else for you. Um, I hear that you have a pen name and that you've written several other books that are a little bit different. Can you tell us about that? Yes, my pen name is Isla Neal. Isla is spelled I-S-L-A, so I'm sure most people can figure out where I came up with that <laughs> name. Um, and I write under that name when I write for teenagers. And I wrote a series, the first one is called Mothership. I co-wrote that series with my husband, who's also a writer. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. It's very, very different. So it was great to sort of sneak it in under a different name and write about something completely different than I normally do. Well, you've written so many books. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your other titles, like Double Dog Dare? Mm -hmm. and yeah, Double Dog Dare is about two kids. Uh, the boy's name is Kansas, the girl's name is Francine. They hate each other, they're mortal enemies. And they get involved in a dare war at their school. So whoever can complete the most Double Dog Dares in two weeks gets to be the news anchor of their school's media club and do the morning announcements. Uh, and let's see, what's another one? <laughs> um, Absolutely Almost is another mm -hmm. one that I wrote that came out pretty recently. And that is about a boy named Albie who lives in New York City. He's going into fifth grade and he struggles a lot in school. And uh, that was a really fun one to write. It's, it's uh, sad in a lot of ways, but it's also funny in a lot of ways too. Well, we have another phone call. This one is from Kale. Um, go ahead, caller. Um, who is your favorite writer? My favorite writer, probably I'd have to say Lewis Sacker, who wrote Holes. He actually, he's the reason that I wanted to be a writer, because when I read Holes, I realized that people were writing really good books for children right now, and that maybe I could try to do it too. Okay. So thank you so much. That's awesome. Do you have any other writers that you really like that you that you've been inspired by? Oh, so many. I love Beverly Cleary. I love Roald Dahl. I love Anna Martin. I devoured the Babysitter's Club books when I was a kid. I did as well. I <laughs> loved them. <laughs> well, um, you know, I find that like the more you read, the better you become as a writer. Do you think that's true? Like, do you, are you a big reader too? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. I love reading and I love reading books of all different styles because it sort of takes you out of your comfort zone of what you are typically into reading. Um, 
But I think one of the really good things about reading, if you want to be a writer, is to sort of question why the writer made the decisions that they made. So not just read a book and think, oh, I liked that, or oh, I didn't like that, but why did they do that? Why did the character go over there instead of going here? And just asking as many questions as you can about the story. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for kids that don't like to read very much? Like, do you have any books that you would recommend or like, I don't know, inspiration, be like, yeah, you should read. I mean, I think the biggest thing is if you don't like to read, to not worry about, you know, if you're reading a really big book or a really smart book, or read whatever you like to read. If you like to read graphic novels, read graphic novels. If you like to read Captain Underpants, read Captain Underpants. If you like to read The Babysitter's Club, which, you know, is amazing, you should read that. <laughs> I think I went through three years where all I read was The Babysitter's Club. And I think if you're reading something that you love, you're gonna be reading a lot and you're gonna read more and you're gonna start reading other stuff later, but I don't think it really matters what you read. I think it matters that you read. For me, it was Sweet Valley High. Yeah. The, that was my like favorite book to Those read. really good too. <laughs> so we have another call. Um, go ahead, caller. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, my name is AJ. Mm -hmm. Hi, do you have a question for Lisa Graff? Yes, uh, I want to have the question, what is the book about the team? So what is the book about? Which book? The second one. The second one. So Tangle of Knots, what's that book about? Okay, so Tangle of Knots is about um, two characters, or sorry, nine characters, who um, they all have special talents, and they've all lost something, and they're all looking for something, and so their lives sort of intersect in very unusual ways. Well, it sounds like we have another call. So, caller, go ahead. With your, what's your question for Lisa Graff? Okay, what is the first character that you ever developed? Ooh, that is a great question. I, the first book I ever had published was a book called The Thing About Georgie, and that's about a boy named Georgie Bishop who's in fourth grade, and he's a dwarf or a little person, so he's someone with dwarfism. He's just very, very short. And like I said, that was the first book I ever had published, but it was not the first book I ever wrote. I wrote three novels before that, uh, because just like any job, you get better at it the more you do it. So I was still learning how to be a writer. And, you know, I'm trying to remember the very first character that I ever thought of, but it, it's hard to remember. I started writing for fun when I was about eight years old, so I've been doing it a long time and keep developing and keep figuring out how to write better and better. Well, Lisa, we are about out of time, but before we go, do you have any last minute advice for our budding writers? I think maybe my best advice for writers, if you already love to write, is to keep everything that you write, even if you think it stinks, and you're definitely gonna write things that stink sometimes, but to keep it in a drawer or a notebook somewhere, um, because one, it's really fun to look at what you wrote before and how you've changed as a writer, and two, if you have an idea that didn't quite work, but you, there's still something about that idea that you love, you can steal it and use it later, which I have done countless times. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa, thank Thank you so much for joining us today and talking about the writing process. It was a pleasure to talk to you. This was really fun. Thanks. If you would like to learn more about Lisa Graff, take a look at her website. To learn more about this program, visit the Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Emily Godfrey. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. Thanks for watching. <laughs>